Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next topic, uh, complicated cysts and complex cystic lesions. Uh, first, I have to put some questions, and I want to discuss on these questions. What are the ultrasound criteria of complicated cysts versus simple cysts? What are the ultrasound criteria of complex cysts, fact or fiction? And last but not least, how to manage the problem? Let's start with the first question. What are the ultrasound criteria of the complicated cyst? So we have to compare and to say, what are the criteria of the simple cyst? And the simple cyst criteria are typically an anechoic reverberation or artifacts may be a visible uh, situation and a well-circumscribed lesion, thin echogenic wall and thin edge shadows. If you're working with compound imaging, you can reduce this type of shadowing. If you're not working with this artifact reduction, you will see it more pronounced. And enhanced through transmission. A simple cyst, if you're working with the shear wave elastography, you don't see shear wave propagation in the fluid, so it is more or less a black hole in this uh, lesion. Now, the complicated cyst. Why is the cyst complicated compared with the simple cyst? You see, there is some hyperechogenicity inside the cystic lesion and an maybe anechoic part as well. So both parts may be visible. And what can be this hyperechogenicity? This can be cell debris, protein globules, cholesterol crystals, red blood cells, lycosides, Epithelial cells, apocrine cells, sludge, or clot. And uh, what is the next point? You go for a color Doppler. You study whether there is a perfusion inside this hyperechogenicity. And if you find a vascularization inside, then there is something wrong. This has nothing to do with a complicated cyst. And uh, here as well, uh, you can see also such an uh, in this uh, oil uh, uh, water uh, fluid level, you don't see any vascularization. And also in the right hand side, you don't see here any vascularization inside the complicated cyst. Outside can be, but not inside. Well, another example. Uh, you see some echogenicities inside the cyst can be debris, sometimes calcium, and if you activate the color Doppler, you can see some uh, color popping up and moving through this uh, anechoic fluid. This is typically for some uh, sedimentation uh, from this uh, yeah, inside uh, cell debris and uh, globules and crystals of uh, inside this fluid. Now, the complicated cyst may show thin echogenic septa. And for me, it was very worthful to understand how the cysts in the breast are developing. First, we have to study the typical acini, or let me say the tuctula lobula unit. And uh, this is a structure of about 0.5 millimeter. It may increase, they can develop a lobular hyperplasure. If the secretion pressure inside increases, then it will enlarge. And the next point, the blunt duct adenosis, you see that the acini, these structures are always more and more enlarging and the whole, uh, the whole lobule becomes bigger and by the end of the day, it deforms its shape and you become macrocystic adenosis. Uh, what is the take-home message highlighting complicated cysts? 
a complicated cyst contains no solid components. A complicated cyst has no thickened wall or thickened septum. Complicated cysts recently detected may not have, may not have a higher probability of malignancy than 2%. So we can put it in the group Barrett 3. Otherwise, it has to be Barrett's 4 if something speaks uh, that the probability of malignancy could be higher in this situation. What are the ultrasound criteria of complex cysts? First, if we go and following Wendy Berg, she described from the morphological point of view, not from the point of view of benignancy and malignancy, only from the morphological point of view. She described four types. The first type with a thick outer wall, a thick internal septum, or a combination of both. Type two, one or more intracystic masses. Type three, a mixed mass of cystic and solid components, but the cystic component is more than the solid component, so at least 50% cystic. Type 4, that's now inverse, a mass predominantly solid with eccentric cystic foci, at least 50% solid. A complex cyst, we already uh, discussed it. Type 1, you see a thickened wall. In this situation, the arrow is telling you this is the thickened wall, and this is an inflammatory putrid intracystic empyema in this case, and you can also realize this uh, hypervascularization surrounding these abscess. This is an acute abscess. Another Example of a complex cyst type 1, you can see a septum inside, a thickened septum, but big areas filled with fluid, and uh, the thickened septum shows in the color Doppler vascularization. So this has nothing to do with complicated. This is complex, and you have a definitely higher probability of malignancy than 2%. So we are in the Pirates 4 range if you go for this shear wave elastogram, you can realize that some parts in this elastography information don't show, don't show any uh, signal, and uh, these are very uh, signals with a low uh, kilopascal uh, value. And uh, in the surrounding area, you can find a higher, uh, hardener part of this tissue. Uh, complex cyst type 2. Here you see one or more intracystic masses. This is the definition. You see this mass here and a septum there, also some parts of the cyst here in combination with the bigger area of fluid. Also here in the 90 degree perpendicular cross section, an intracystic mass with a thickened septum, with a thickened wall, all in all, it is turned out to be an intracystic papilloma. Uh, with histology, you can find such, an, such a papillomas uh, uh, growing inside. Uh, usually, very, or let me say very often, you can find some vascularization in this papilloma. Uh, it depends on the histological situation, whether there's more sclerosis or less sclerosis inside this papilloma. Another complex cyst type 2 with an intracystic papilloma. And with 3D ultrasound, you realize here in this uh, surface rendered image that there is another papilloma. And here, there's the next papilloma. So this is a papillomatose inner layer of the cyst. Type 3, a mass of mixed cystic and solid components. 
You find a lot of uh, solid components uh, developing inside this uh, fluid uh, here in the cross section is well visible or here visible. And uh, if you go for a color Doppler, you don't see a vascularization in this area, only here in the marginal area. Another example for here you see this papillomatose uh, digital growth of tumorous uh, parts and uh, another example here as well, a growing intracystic growing mass. And all these masses were intracystic carcinomas. Always keep an eye also on the area between the mass inside the cyst and the surrounding tissue to the cyst, whether there is a mass penetrating this uh, line, so it is pretty clear that there is some infiltrative disease, and uh, this could be a DCIS as well, an intracystic DCIS. If the basement membrane is not disrupted, you can't say this, uh, uh, only the pathologist can tell you this, then you are dealing with an intracystic DCIS, so DCIS can be huge. A complex is type 3. Again, some fluid level here and a mass. And uh, this mass shows a high vascularization. With mammography, you see this lesion. And you can also see this with your, with your eye, uh, the bulging of the skin here uh, where the lesion developed. This is an intracystic carcinoma, and the fluid level was nothing else than some blood inside the cyst fluid. Another complex cyst type 3. Here again, it is a smaller, smaller cyst, and this is the solid part. And in the solid part, there are some very echogenic dots and lines telling you that there can be some uh, calcified areas. And the additional mammography tells you this is the underlying, the underlying calcium, which can be visualized with ultrasound in that way. It was a fibrocystic mastopathic lesion, a complex cyst type 3. A type 4 lesion. Type 4 is a mass predominantly solid with eccentric cystic foci, at least 50%. And you see this mass, it turned out to be a mastopathic cystic mass. Always again, you can find such cystic masses uh, in more or less mastopathic areas, uh, and uh, these are benign underlying diseases. Another type 4 cyst, complex cyst. You visualize this cyst. This is a tomographic ultrasound imaging information. And you see inside the cyst these very echogenic parts. Um, looks like a tumorous component filling the more or less uh, big parts of the cyst lumen. And if you have such a situation, always go to mammography. Compare the mammography information, and you will see here, this is a typical oil cyst, a liponecrotic cyst, after surgery, after breast-conserving surgery. So, a typical aspect. But what you never see in this situation, a vascularization of these echogenic parts tumor-forming parts inside the oil cyst. Another complex cyst type 4, here with the shear wave information in addition. You see there are cystic components and there are the solid components, a very hard components compared with the cystic fluid uh, close beside. The take-home message. The probability of malignancy in complex cysts is reported in literature by 23% to 31%. That means 
if you have a complex system, you can't follow it. This is definitely no pirates three situation. You have uh, to go for histology. You have to clear what is uh, the pathology behind. Fact or fiction? Look at this. Is this a complex cyst? Is this a solid lesion? I would say a good question. This is the same structure. It's completely clear. This is a microcyst. And this is only a focus close to the chest wall. And, the, and this lesion is completely out of focus. So that means uh, you have to keep an eye whether the settings are in a proper position so that you really see the structures in a correct way. That means the transmitter focusation has to be adapted to the region of interest. High frequencies improve the tissue contrast with better visualization of cyst wall and intracystic lesions. High frequencies optimize the axial and lateral resolution. Complicated cyst versus complex cyst. What's this? Is it an intermammary, intermammary lymph node? Or is it a cyst with a thin septum? Go for a color Doppler. You see there's no vascularization. An intermammary lymph node shows vascularization. You have, a hyla, you have the hilum vessels. You see these vessels. And compare this. This is an intermammary lymph node. And you see the vessels in the hilum. It is very easy also in very small uh, lymph nodes. You can visualize the vascularization of the hilar vessels. Complicated versus complex. This is the color Doppler information. It's nothing else than intramammary lymph node it has nothing to do with the cyst. So lymph nodes sometimes are very, very echo poor and the discussion may pop up whether this is a uh, complicated uh, cyst or maybe a complex cyst. Another exa example, that's mammography. You see the lesion there. And then you see the lesion with ultrasound, only with a little fluid surrounding this mass. And uh, go again for the color Doppler, you see the vascularization of this mass, and it turned out to be an intracystic carcinoma. Complicated versus complex. There are fluid com uh, components. These are solids. And here you see, this is another type of cyst here, an implant. And uh, this is uh, the MR information you can, uh, you can get. And you have the ring-shaped enhancement, so this is always suspicious for a malignant lesion, and it turned out to be a cancer. What's here? Complicated versus complex. You visualize a cyst, fluid level, but what is this? This is a cancer which infiltrates the cyst wall and is the reason for the blood level here inside the cyst lumen. How to manage the problem? A simple cyst usually needs no intervention. That means only if a cyst is painful, if it's big, then you can uh, go for an evacuation by a fine needle aspiration. And uh, this is a very and a simple procedure, quickly done if necessary. Complicated versus complex here in this situation. Go for the mammogram. This is the right management. And you realize this is the liponecrotic cyst, an oil cyst, it's a complicated cyst, nothing to do, no vessels inside. So this is without any problems. Cystic versus solid, we have a very strong shadowing behind. There must be something inside uh, which uh, uh, takes a lot of energy and doesn't uh, bring too much back to your transducer. So this is the mammography information. And this was a funny thing, because two years later, I went, for a, I went for a biopsy in this situation. And two years later, this is 
the situation from the puncture. And here you see, this is the situation two years later, pretty much smaller. No calcium anymore inside. All this calcium was in the content of the cyst. It was not in the wall, in the cyst wall embedded. It was the content of the cyst. Liquid or solid? Okay. This is the mammography information. Take a needle. Go up, go down. The needle freely can be moved inside. This always speaks for fluid. If this is solid, you always move with your needle the solid lesion up and down. And so it's quickly clear that there has to be some fluid inside. And a problem is masking the target after the intervention. That means if you aspirate this lesion, after aspiration you have this information. And if you see this, and this is the basis, then it is definitely wise to bring in a marker that you can make clear where the lesion was located. Uh, for example, whether Comac or Hydromark or whatever mark, uh, so that you can reproduce exactly where the lesion was located before it's gone. 14 days later, you don't see anything anymore in this area after this puncture. So it is a need, it's, it's important to mark it. Here, this is the marker, for example. Before puncturing such a cyst, always make clear the distance between the nipple and the lesion, between the skin and the lesion in that radiary duct parallel way then you have a rather good idea where the lesion was located to reproduce where this uh, lesion was located. But a marker is 10 times better. Here another lesion. What's going on with this? Should we follow it? Should we go for a, bi a biopsy? This is the color Doppler information. A lot of vascularization. Vertical axis. The next... If I go for a biopsy in such a lesion, I don't go first for the biopsy. I put a marker beyond the lesion, such a marker, beyond the lesion, and then I go for the biopsy, and this is now the biopsy. Here, this is the marker. This is now the needle uh, penetrating the lesion, and it turned out to be a benign fibrocystic lesion. Uh, after all, if uh, something is unclear, go for a preoperative hook wire placement. Um, sometimes, um, if the lesions are small, if uh, there's a problem with the marker, if you have no marker available, don't go for a biopsy. Um, go for a uh, diagnostic surgery. Bring in a hook wire, let's remove the lesion. But if you have markers, then you can also work with biopsies and with markers. If the lesions are very small, if the thickening or the papillary lesion is very small, then you have a good chance that you miss the lesion with the biopsy. And then it is better to go first for a uh, diagnostic surgical removal, removal of the lesion. Bring in a hook wire, and uh, the result was an atypical ductal hyperplasia in this case. Finishing this topic, I can recommend two further reasons about complex cystic breast masses, a diagnostic approach and imaging pathologic correlation on the one hand, and from Wendeberg, the cystic lesions of the breast, sonographic pathologic correlation. Thank you for paying attention.